absolute stud of a trick. Welcome to day four of the uh, boots on the ground portion of the scouting video here. Um, again, this video is going to be online boots on the ground, all the way progressing towards killing on this new property that I'm on right now. And right now, I'm sitting in a big buck bed. I'm going to break down what you do when you find the bed first, um, how to qualify it for what time of year, how to assess what kind of buck is in this bed, even if there aren't rubs in the bed. And I'm going to show you why he's bedding here, how he's getting in, how he's using it, and how I'd set up on it. This day is going to kind of be dedicated to breaking down specific situations and show you guys how I do it. All right, so first things first, this is the bed. Notice when I was kneeling down in it, my head was just above these branches. I kind of sit back on my heels while I'm kneeling to judge at my shoulder height where a good buck's antlers would be if he's alert. And I make sure that I have clearance because he's not going to want stuff in his antlers. So as you can see, some stuff has been snapped off of this pine to leave room for antlers. That's one thing that's kind of indicating to me that it's possibly a buck bed here. Also the intelligence with which it was laid out in this it's kind of disturbed because of my mud and my movement here but there's a lot of hair in this bed it's actually below some pine needles so I'm thinking it's more early season but this is some of the hair and you can tell just an obvious spot for a buck to be bedding drop off everywhere around steep drop off thermal coming 270 degrees rising up to him all the day which is absolutely perfect this most defined trail is going to be his exit trail so he comes out here and exits this way towards food in the ridge top which makes perfect sense here so it's coming out this way this second most defined trail right here coming from below is his axis trail so you can tell in the shape of the bed with his back towards me currently that the wind is going to be coming over this ridge towards him and it's going to be coming over his back and a little bit lower than him is where he's going to be catching that swirling effect, that thermal tunnel and he'll be able to smell things below him and above him here with this setup but typically bucks in hill country will access below like this one because they're catching the main wind but two at the coldest time of every day is typically just before the sun is rising and there's actually a little bit of a window with a dropping thermal there and so he's actually catching a dropping thermal the leeward wind and he's coming up here and all day long he's catching that rising thermal as well now i'm going to run you guys through how to judge what time of year these beds are being made Just bear with me because i absolutely suck at recording myself in scouting situations um, but there's a few things that i heavily consider when I am, when I found a bed, and I really want to figure out what time of year this is being used. Something I found that's really, really important is that bucks bed in their beds, typically, in my area at least, three days to a week out of the year. That bedding area is really hot, and then they move on and go to another area. Um, and there's lots of different reasons they do that. It, a lot of it has to do with a rut. A lot of it has to do with pressure. And so these are the few key factors that I really look at. I'm going to read off my list here because I like to write stuff down. Um, a few key things I really look at when I'm scouting and I find a bed and I want to qualify what time of year this is being used are rubs in the bed, the depth of the hair in the bed, and I'll explain that, um, the local cover and shade and foliage. Um, I look at the proximity to access, the proximity to doe bedding, and what I believe the deer is smelling. I look at the nearest food sources and the secondary food sources around and I look at the type of those food sources. Um, not necessarily in that order, but those are all things I look at. Um, to explain really quick, rubs in the bed, pretty obvious. Also, what kind of rubs? Um, are there rubs in the bed? Is he making this, uh, is he sitting in this bed when his antlers are hard and not soft? Um, and the rubs in the area, is he absolutely tearing up those trees trying to do an aggressive display? Um, or is he just kind of marking that this is his bed? 
and just lightly marking small trees around. Um, the, the depth of the hair in the bed, I'm looking is the hair above the leaves, in the middle of the leaves, below the leaves, those are all different timing of the year. Above the leaves, typically late season, if there's a lot of hair, um, I'll know it's spring. Or if it's light hair and it's above the leaves, I'll know it's just after leaf off. In the middle of the leaves is kind of during that leaf off period for us. I usually gauge like October 20th to November 5th in that area, maybe even earlier than November 5th. And then um, below the leaves I really like the best because that's early season and that's much easier to key in on and it's really obvious when you see it. Uh, so dig through those leaves, find when that hair is. The local shade and cover, is he sitting in an area that has a lot of shade? Is he sitting in an area that's south facing and has a lot of sun exposure? Um, that will help me determine what time of year he's bedding. Uh, for instance, Dan, with his buck this year, this 2021 buck, shot a booner on public land, and it, um, when he was scouting in the spring, he noticed that it was rubbing up willow trees and that the willows shed their leaves pretty early in the season, so he knew he needed to key in on that buck before those willows even dropped. Um, another thing that kind of goes along with that is the food sources nearby. Is he bedding in an area where white oaks are dropping right by, or red oaks? I'll know... White oaks are earlier in the season, so I got to key in on that bed when the white oaks are dropping because he may be eating that food source. Is he bedding near a bunch of stinging nettle where he's going to go and eat that stinging nettle before he goes out to his main food source? Is he bedding near apple trees where he's going to that early mast? Um, that will help me determine where he's going and what time of year he's bedding as well. Uh, proximity to doe bedding and what he's smelling. I often use this in the sense of is he smelling access from above? Is he smelling doe bedding coming from that main wind? Um, is he smelling the access from below, like this case, where he's using those thermals to monitor some logging trails down here? Um, those are things I really consider. Um, and how far away is he from the access of the property? Is he pushed further back because it's later in the season and he's been uh, busted out and around and he doesn't want to hang out where he's getting pressured a lot? Or is he somewhat closer to access? Um, this doesn't necessarily apply directly to overlook spots where they could bed there all year. But earlier in the season, I find that they're a little bit closer to access and their desired food sources, and then they get pushed back when it comes closer to the rut. I will get into the specifics all for this case here and break it down for you guys. So the first main thing with this bed in particular, not a lot of foliage over. He's got some good exposure to the sun here. It's not south facing, so I don't really think it's late season. And based off the bed, there's short hairs in it, and they're pretty deep into the soil. They're actually a little bit below below these needles, excuse me. They're a little bit below these needles, and so I think it's kind of pointing me towards early season. I don't really see rubs in the bed. I see this is really open. He might not want it to be so open when he's bedding here. When these trees grow up, he's going to have plenty of shade. He's also got a secondary bed back here for more shade. So that's that first thing checked off my list, I think by the depth of the hair and by the openness that he might not be comfortable with I'm kind of guessing that he's going to be using this bed in the early season already I don't see a lot of rubs around um, there's not doe bedding above where this main winds coming from so I don't think he's bedding here during the rut there aren't aggressive rubs to mark that it's the rut there is not doe bedding where this wind is coming from, where he's downwind of it. So I don't think he's really using this bed during the rut. That's reinforcing my early season decision again. Um, and then I just want to go into the food sources around. So below here, down there, check those trees. There's a lot of white oaks down there. Um, I can't tell right now because it's a spring, but there may be stinging nettle above that he's browsing on before he's going to these main crop fields. But based off these white oaks, these red oak leaves in here, I think that he's going to be using this during the early season so he doesn't have to travel really far to get some food before he goes out to those main fields. Um, so those are a few things off my checklist already. And uh, the next thing is working towards how am I going to kill this buck and how do I set up on him. So when you're looking to set up, first thing is how does this buck exit this bed? Bed's over here, he's exiting here, that's huge. So that's probably the trail I'm gonna end up setting up on. How does he enter the bed? So say I can't get in on his exit because he's got a pretty bulletproof setup. Um, how is he entering that bed? So this is your second most defined trail here. He's entering it from below, as I commonly see in hill country. 
This is because early, early in the morning, right at the coldest point in the day, is typically you get about 20 to 30 minutes to maybe an hour of a dropping thermal before that sun comes up. He's coming from below, catching that dropping thermal. He's Jay hooking here and he's sensing, he's, he's smelling that windward edge coming over. And then all throughout the day, he's picking up thermals from here. So I know during the daytime, I'm getting busted if I'm coming from down there, both by visual and by thermal. And I know I need to dodge this wind, so I'm looking for a just off wind. Um, I'm gonna put myself in this buck's shoes real quick, or in his hoofs, I should say. And sit in his bed and just kind of look and see what he can see. I know none of that is anything I could access on or sit on to kill him. I need to be out of that sight range if I'm setting up below, which I'm not planning for in this. Fortunately, behind with these pines, I know that I can get pretty close. That's maybe 40 yards I can see too. If I can be quiet and I can keep the wind in my favor, I can get pretty close to this buck. So that's some things I'm looking for right away. Because I think he's doing this in the early season too. I think he's been here in the early season. Another thing I want to work towards is identifying that first food source he's going to off of his exit. And I'm going to try to set up before then and as close to his bed as possible. His bed's right over there. Um, a few things that are also tipping me off that this is early season that I've been finding. Seeing rubs. They're mature buck rubs. For instance, this one. Most certainly a mature buck rub. Uh, the average height on this, that midpoint height, is at least 35 inches. Um, he's hitting high and hitting branches to the side. It's a great buck rub, but it is not dug in. It is not aggressive. It's not something that is just screaming, I'm tearing up this tree to ward off other bucks to mark my territory. It's, again, kind of an early season looking rub here. Another thing I'm finding, a lot of oak leaves, a lot of white oak leaves. These white oak leaves I'm finding indication that this is probably being used in the early season. So I'm getting more and more support that this is an early season spot. So his bed is just down further in those pines there. I'm noticing a lot of buckthorn here, which is going to provide a lot of cover during the early season. Um, leaves off pretty quickly in the year. And that may be an area that he's actually shifting to for a different wind. So instead of not marking this wind as optimal just for this, you know he might also bed here on that kind of wind there too. So now I'm tasked with finding a spot that avoids both of those wind directions here. And um, I think the key might be relying on uh, my thermals. To help me out a bit. I also know that with this area being more open, he's much less likely to just walk in the open here. He's more likely to actually travel through that buckthorn when he starts to leave his bed. So, how am I going to get on this deer and get a shot on him without being too far away and without getting smelt? This is going to take a while. So, I finally decided on the tree I need to sit in. It's going to be this one right here. When I get up there, you can see over this way. See over this way. We've got trails meeting from the exits. So the main bed I scouted for you guys over here. Coming up trail to here. Right there. And the other beds in the buckthorn are down there. And they come up and they kind of come to a head there. There's a really old scrape there. And there's all sorts of white oaks on this side. So I'm thinking that I can get here without being detected. My wind can kind of suck downhill in the afternoon with this thermal. Um, I can actually get shots here and sit in the tree, unlike a lot of these other areas who have this transitional cover where it's midway up. So I can't get in the trees because they're not thick enough. Um, I can't even strap together some thin ones and get high. I'd be shooting into cover um, and I can't be on the ground because there's no cover below. I've kind of had to pick something that First, satisfies the wind requirement and not getting spooked. And second, gives me a couple shots. This is a killer sign. I see that bed. Got a big mature rub here. Look how high up that is. That's the middle of the rub right there. 
You can see he hit it in previous years too. When he was younger and a bit shorter. This is matted in. And that is awesome. He tore that up. I mean, this isn't super aggressive and dug in, but this is just a tall, tall, tall rub. I mean, belly button height on me. That has got to be mid to high 30s off the ground. That is one tall, tall rub. Find all sorts of cool stuff while hunting, including laxatives. Don't know why someone has a laxative in the woods, but apparently if it poop really bad in the stand, and you just eat a bunch of corn and then take laxatives, you can make a way around the law bait pile and just spill your guts and have deer come to it all the time. Great tactics. I just found a big doe bed. You can see it outlined like that. And I'm believing it's a doe bed. Actually, there's another because I see a few beds in this area. One, two over there, a couple here. There, when this grass is taller, it's going to provide a little more cover that does like to bed in. Um, this deer is facing uphill into the leeward edge. There aren't any rubs really over here. Um, so I'm pretty certain this is doe bedding. But one thing I wanted to show you guys to um, give you a little tip. This is a red oak cap I found in the bed. And you can see how sun. You can see how it's kind of chipped off the top. There's little bits of chips on the top. Um, there's a few more like that in here too. But that's what it's going to look like when a deer eats an acorn. It's not going to be cleanly popped off. Um, I see that more with like squirrels and stuff eating them. But when it's got that top just chipped a little bit, um, it's much more indicative of a deer feeding. Just as Further proof that uh, my theory before about the acorn caps was right. I'm in an extremely steep gradient here, and um, there's an area there are no deer trails, just repelling down right now. And the squirrel had himself a feast with some acorns. You can see every one is taken perfectly off, none of them are chipped. In the case you'll see with deer be chipped on these caps. See all those are perfectly extracted. So this is what I'd say would be an example of an early season rub uh, just based off how aggressive it is. <clears throat> Until there's about a three-year-old deer. Um, again the age classes I'm kind of getting from uh, 18 inches being about a one-year-old and lower off the ground to the middle of the rub. 23 inches or so, 24 give or take a few inches to the middle of the rub, I'd call it two-year-old, and around 33 to 34, give or take a few, um, is to the middle of the rub is a three-year-old, and anything higher than that is likely a four-year-old uh, or older. Um, this is the middle of the rub about, maybe even a little bit higher. That is um, at least 30 inches. And you can tell he's not really digging in here much. He's just pulling a little bit off, kind of smoothened out the tree here. It doesn't look like he's putting a huge impression in this tree. It doesn't look like he's doing it very aggressively. I would assume that we're actually pretty close to his bed. So we'll find out if that theory is true or not. A little further down this trail, an old scrape. Looking branch, I'd say we're getting a lot closer. I'd say we're actually probably right next to it. Got about 50 yards to go, I bet. 20 yards further down that trail. Is a massive 360 annual rub. It's all the way around here. There's hair in, in this, like there's been bedding here recently. More hair right there, bedding there. Big, big rub right here. Really tall. His bed's gotta be super close. Oh, I might just walk right through it. Yes, this is it. Big, big, big bed. You can see the outline here. You know, lima bean shape, kidney bean, what have you. Wow, huge. There might actually be another bed somewhere down here, I feel like, because he'll get a better thermal advantage down here. 
this will be right on the edge. The trail continues. I'm just gonna keep recording. I know this camera might die pretty soon. Yep, this might be it. Very nice rub right here. There's a nice rub right there, nice and tall. Hitting on all sides. Those branches there, I don't think that's as bad. And further, another nice rub to my right. Worked up patch of dirt here, this actually might be it as well. Corn up tree, I think he's just, I think he's shifting around here based on the wind. Because there's been a lot of spots that are the same size, very large bed. And they're just adjusting for the wind it looks like. These trees are torn up in this small little area here. Yeah, this is probably actually the real one. Right here, his back facing that way. That's the trail I came in on. That's his exit trail. And maybe also his entry, honestly, with the way that this is set up. He's got to go very steep to get off of this, but big, big, big bed. You can tell. Huge bed. Like that. Catching the prevailing wind over the top. Rising thermals from below here on either side. This looks like a great spot. So I actually, I actually think this area is more of a rut bed. There's so many rubs coming in here. Just huge rubs tearing up trees. Thick trees, high and low, just tearing it up. Everywhere he's going, he's rubbing. And there's actually a really defined exit trail leading down to a thermal hub. And that thermal hub has thick grass and doe bedding down in it. So I actually think this buck is oddly accessing high and then going down low. And then, um, man, if he, you know, he could spend the whole rut down there. Um, catching the dropping thermal going down in the afternoon and then coming up in the morning smelling his bed with the prevailing wind and the dropping thermal in the early early morning he might not even need to go that way um, might go that way to eat some acorns actually which is the only real reason I guess for him to go that way maybe eat some acorns or go to the crop fields but this is crazy good you can tell with the several beds I've found that are the same size, they're all, they're all giant, they're all using the wind the same way um, as a wind to back facing below, catching the thermal coming up like a mature buck would. These high rubs, this just looks like a big buck's home, I mean, a textbook big buck's home. I'm hyped to find this. See, he's just touching every tree on the way out here. And he's just hitting everything. This aggressive rub here. This just looks like a killer spot. Nice aggressive rub there. Snapping branches off up high. You can also note that this is um, a lot further from the access. Uh, it's going to be absolute hell to walk here. Oh, dropped my glove. It's going to be hell to walk here. But um, this is... Uh, where a big buck would be. Far from the access, push back. Um, fits, the, fits the thought of rut because he's been pressured all season. It looks like there's going to be a good amount of pressure in this area. He's been pressured all season. He's pushed back to this very, very far back point and just laying down aggressive sign everywhere. I'm hyped for this. Let's figure out how to kill him. Well, this is something you don't see every day. Big old hairball. Probably from a bobcat. It's pretty cool. I guess I'm not the only predator in these woods. Alright guys, so right here. I got a scrape. And I'm in this bottom right now. You can tell my pants ripped open today. I'm in this bottom right now. And I've scouted all the ridges up top. And I'm just trying to 
see and put the bigger picture together, I'm trying to see what these bucks are going to be doing um, once the sun starts setting and they start coming down in the afternoon. And I want to see what they're doing, possibly during the rut where they're shifting up their bedding patterns and stuff like that. So I'm observing these ridges and the sun's actually starting to set. So this ridge behind the camera over here, just off to my left, is shaded completely and it's much, much colder here. And the ridge over here is warmer. Well, the prevailing wind all day has been coming from this now sunny ridge to this now shaded ridge. But, and this is why you bring milkweed with you, you can see it's going away. It's going towards that sunny ridge, towards the prevailing wind right now. Towards the exact wind we had when I came down here. And it's because that cool air is all coming off of this hillside and it's a downdrafting thermal from the night. That's why the scrape is right here. The scrape is here as a monitoring place, as a congregation place for bucks to, you know, come down here in the afternoon, smell where all these does are, bed it up on these hills. They can smell does up here when this thermal's coming downward. And they can also smell their beds that they want to go to during the day and work their way upward before they do. Um, that way they're scent checking their beds beforehand. The reason the scrape is here also is it's just a check-in spot, a survey spot um, where multiple bucks will hit it and does will hit it and bucks can get a feel for what does are coming into heat. Um, it's a great place for bucks to hit right before going up to their bed because you think deer are most active at night. Well, they make all their sign, they do the does do their checking at night a lot, they cruise by scrapes and stuff, and so right before they go to bed, they make their decision and they see what happened the entire night when all the deer were active. They see who checked in, who's in heat, what's going on here. So this is a great place for a trail camera. This is a scrape that'll probably be active for most of the season, um, not necessarily just the rut. It'll be a good place to catch bucks from multiple bedding points coming in and I'll get a lot of information from setting a camera in front of this and letting it soak the entire year. This is not something I'd hunt because of its location. It's not close to bedding. Which your buck's not going to come down here except maybe the craziest day of rut in the year during daylight. So it's a great place to get some survey and it's a great indicator of how those thermals play into your hunting plan. Here's a perfect example of why those lowering thermals and that scrape down there, which is right about there, is so key. Look at this. We got a bed here. Now, I'm assuming this stuff I should say beforehand is doe bedding. We've got small rubs throughout this. There's an old logging trail that hasn't been maintained in a long time. I see a lot of does use this for relief bedding in this very steep country. Um, these rubs are all of differing, differing heights. So I think it's young bucks just getting excited and marking hot does. Come down this logging road a little further. And there's another bed right here, a bunch of hair in it. Oh, a different size. This one's a bit bigger. Um, this bed over there was a little bit smaller than this one. Along here, another small bed. A lot of hair in this one. Look at all that. Lots of bed there, bigger bed there. Another bed here. Let's see. All sorts of bedding in here. Small rub there. Bed here with some hair in it. Big bed here. With some hair, I'm sure. In it, yep, hair down there. Hair in it. And all of it is dropping right down with these thermals, dropping straight down to that scrape. Perfect way for a buck to come cruising through and smell what's up here. This is an example of a rub on a pretty thick tree that I think is not a mature buck. So this is like, it's a good looking rub in the concept of the size of the tree. It's a pretty dang thick tree, but as you can see, it's not very high. This is maybe a three-year-old if the ground is flat, but the ground is not flat. The ground is slanted down towards the rub. So he's actually standing up higher, and you can see on this side, when he's rubbing it from below, the rub extends lower and doesn't quite reach as high as the last one. He's not hitting this tree next to him at all. And again, while it looks like a pretty thick rub, that average height's pretty low. And you can tell that 
this side is distorted by the hill and this side shows that average height right here so that's probably a good two-year-old buck but it is not a mature buck I'm back at the truck we're actually looking at the truck right now and I'm gonna be stinking not show you guys the parking lot or anything around it but it was a productive eight hours of scouting many 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 miles covered and just a little bit left to go on this property thank you for watching this video I really appreciate all the support I get from you guys if you could please like the video and subscribe to the honeybees channel I really appreciate it and if you could please comment something that you learned in this video or something that you'd like to see in future scouting videos it really helps us out to get that feedback and it helps us make content that you guys are really going to love um, this video is just one portion of a multi-part series that's going to be me breaking down a new place e-scouting which if you haven't seen that video it's up on the channel right now please go check that out the second portion has been the boots on the ground and I'm going to do a little bit of a review and some preseason scouting next year and then hopefully kill a big mature buck on it even though I've never hunted on this property before so please check this out stay updated with the series also got some turkey hunting videos coming out that you guys are really going to love so like comment subscribe let me know what you guys want to see in the future and I thank you for the support